Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and we have been getting a ton of questions about meat goats here on our channel lately. And one of the most common ones is when should you process a goat? When should I have my goats butchered? What's the right size? What's the right breed? Lots of things like that. So anyways, guys, if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit that subscription button, ring the notification bell, or as the little man Houston says, the notification bell, and let's get right into it. So as you may have seen on our video, we recently processed three meat goats. And since we posted that video, I've had a ton of questions about processing goats, which goats to process, how to get them to the right weight, what's the right weight, when should they be born, and a million other questions. So let's go ahead and address some of those. So first off, I raise Kiko and Kiko boar cross meat goats. The Kiko goat is a great meat goat because they're very hardy. They can get by on a lot less feed than say a boar. The boar goat, um, I don't have a straight looking boar here, but a boar goat's gonna be a solid white with a red head. They're from South Africa. They are a very heavy muscled, very thick meat goat, but they come with a lot of issues like parasites, and their hooves need trimmed all the time and things. The Kiko is from New Zealand. Kiko goats are, were originally a, um, a feral goat that they brought in and kind of mixed them in with a few other breeds and kind of came up with the Kiko breed. So the Kiko is a very hardy and you mix the Kiko with the boar goat, you get a very good meat goat. Now, what size should you butcher your goats? That's one question I've been getting a lot. And when should they be born? When should they be bred? I'll kind of tell you how I do mine and the reasons I do them the way they do. I like for my kids to be born in the cold of winter time. I know that sounds silly. I live in Oklahoma and we don't have extreme cold temperatures here. It'll get down in the single digits some. A lot of nights are in the 20s and 30s. I like my kids to be born January, February time frame because I have a lot of problems with coccidia in the soil in my area. So if I, let, if I wait and hold off and have my kids born April, May time frame, we get a lot of rain and the soil is very wet and I have a lot of problems with parasites like coccidia and worms and other internal parasites and things. It causes a lot of problems for my meat goat herd. So having my kids born in that January, February time frame, I can get my nannies, get my does up in the barn. They're not born in the barn. I want my kids born out on pasture because those Kiko does do a really good job of raising them on their own. With boars, you get stuck with pinning them up in, in kidding stalls in a barn. It's a lot of work. Kikos, not so much. So I want them born in the cold because they're, they're much hardier. They do a lot better. They don't have to deal with those parasites. And in my area, that puts my kids to that market weight of say, if I'm just gonna sell my kids, about 50 to 60 pounds is my target goal. I want, I want to get my kids to that 50 to 60 pounds when they're selling the best in um, you know, my area. So depending on where you live, depending on the culture and the type of people and the cultures of people around you, here in our area, there's a lot of Hispanic people. The Hispanics love to butcher goats at about 40 to 50 pounds, sometimes 60. They want to butcher them whole and cook them for a whole meal for their family in the summertime. You may live in an area where there's more of a Middle Eastern culture that work around different holidays. So you need to kind of research the area you're in, figure out when those ethnic holidays are and when the people in your area that are most likely to eat goats are going to want them around certain holidays. They're going to bring more money that way. If you just have your kids born if you just run your buck with your doe all the time and you just have kids born at random times and they're not all born together at the same time, they're gonna come up and, and be weaning weight, weaning age at different times. And you might miss those peak times when your goats are gonna bring the most. Now that's if you're wanting to sell them for other people to eat. If you're like me, and we just recently, just this year, processed our own goats for our own consumption the first time this year, you want a goat that's gonna hit when you think you know the best time for you to to graze that animal on grass or when all the rest of your other animals are gonna be going off to the butcher 
you know, a lot of people process pigs in the fall so they don't have to feed them through the winter, don't have to worry about watering pigs then, or if you're gonna have a steer processed, you know, get it in the, in the winter time, late winter, early spring, feed it all through spring, summer, fall, have it processed. A lot of people just pair up their goats with that. I like having them processed in the fall. That's just kind of when we fill our freezer. I don't know, it's just me, it's my preference. Um, I'm gonna have them butchered like I did this year in say November or December time frame. Then I'm not feeding them all the way through the winter. Cost a lot less. For me personally, my goats are out on pasture most of the year. So they really get very little feed. So I'm not putting a lot into them. If you live on a small acreage and you say you've got one, two, three, five acres and you don't have enough grass to, to graze your goats year round, you're gonna wanna feed them and feed them to, if you're feeding them, your goal obviously is to get them to butcher weight as fast as possible. And that could be, depending on the goat, mixed breeds like this Kiko boar cross herd back here behind me. My goal is to get them to that 50 to 60 pounds in about six months, sometimes a little less, but I don't feed them real heavily. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna wanna get them to that 50 to 60 pound range as quick as possible, you're gonna wanna give them about three to 4% of their body weight daily in grain. So if you got uh, say a 100 pound goat, that would be three to four pounds. A 50 pound goat, you're talking like a pound and a half, pound and three quarter of grain per day. Not a lot of grain for a goat. Now me personally, I'm not gonna butcher my goats when they are in that 50 to 60 pound range. I've got them here. I want them to be bigger, like there's one weather right here. This guy right here, the white one. That's the last uh, kid from this, this year's kid crop that I'm gonna have processed. I'm kinda holding on to him because we're gonna take him to a different processor that does a lot of German style sausage, bratwurst, Polish sausage, all that kind of stuff. Kinda holding on to him. But I don't wanna butcher one at 50 to 60 pounds because most processors are gonna charge you a flat fee, at least in my ear, they're gonna charge you a flat fee for killing and, and gutting and getting them to that that hanging carcass. And then they're gonna charge you so much per pound. So if you've got a 50 pound goat that you're gonna process, and like for me, my processor was, I believe it was $65. So they're gonna charge $65 per goat to, to kill and get to that hanging carcass stage. And then it was like 20 or 24 cents per pound to have it processed. So I'm gonna get a lot more meat. I'm gonna get a lot more for my money if I wait until fall. Look at Barry chasing the goat. Yeah, they're just playing. I'm gonna get a lot more for my money if I try to get that goat up to that 75, 80, 90 pound range. And my goal is, is to get as much meat as possible. Now this year, as you guys know, as you can see, I've got a big Kiko buck back there. I'm thinking next year I may switch to a boar buck. I used to have a boar buck. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a long time, you may remember old Duke. Duke was a, a big boar buck that we had for a long time my daughter actually raised him on a bottle and he just actually lives down the road at my brother's he's kind of a uh, a lawn mower i guess you'd say now he's kind of living out his retirement years but i may switch back to a boar buck because i've got all these kiko does some of them are kiko uh boar crosses and i want to get a little bit more of that boar bloodline in if we're going to be processing our own goats and uh, getting the most meat out of them i want that kiko for hardiness like i said earlier but I need to get that boar genetic back in there for the most meat possible. So, maybe I'm just kind of rambling along on this video, but I've had so many questions about, about uh, processing goats and goat meat and what's goat meat taste like? That's a big question. I bet I've had that question a hundred times. And everyone wants to know, does it taste like lamb? And my 100% full belief is it tastes nothing like lamb. I cannot stand the taste of lamb probably because it hasn't been prepared right I get it there's probably places out there that do a great job at preparing lamb the ones I've had well it's just I don't like the taste of it goat to me tastes nothing like lamb it doesn't have near that gamey taste I would say it's kind of similar to venison um, to me venison has a little bit of a gamey taste to it unless you do an excellent job of removing all the fat, all the silver skin. It's got a little bit of a gamey taste. Goat has a similar flavor to deer or venison, but to me, there's no gamey flavor to it. Now, 
a lot of people want to know do you butcher uh, boar goats that are intact but still have their testicles boar goats I said boar a lot of people want to know do you butcher a buck or a billy goat that's still intact that still has his testicles or do you make them a weather remove the testicles castrate them and my preference is I castrate them just because I like to keep them around a little bit and get them a little bit bigger I just don't want to separate those young billies out because once they get to that oh say 40 pound range a lot of goats are sexually mature or are able to breed so I don't want those you know four or five six month old billies or bucks whatever you want to call them running around trying to breed my does so I go ahead and band mine which is just like a really small rubber band looks like a cheerio I've got a pair of pliers that goes up over the testicles and I'm not gonna say it's pain-free but it's a lot less painful than the old way of cutting them and making mountain oysters out of the testicles but I prefer the weathers uh, not that I've butchered a lot of my own bucks. It has nothing to do with the taste It just has to do with me being able to keep all of my goats together and not having to separate all those little bucks out and keep them Away from my young does Now depending on where you are if you're raising goats for for other people's consumption Fall back on what I said earlier and find out what the market in your area wants There are some cultures that prefer that that buck to be left intact. They want that intact goat to butcher that's just part of their culture or part of their religion whatever it is that's what they prefer so in your area you need to find out what what people are asking for what people are wanting if you're going to be raising them for other people this is ridiculous we got bear and bella <laughs> they see me talking to the camera and they want in on the action don't you guys don't you you just always right there huh so I hope this video answers a few questions. Bella, quit banging on my tripod. I hope this video answers a few questions. We get a ton of questions since we did the goat processing video. That video is up to like 150 something thousand views. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link to that video up there. I'll leave a card and I'll leave a link in the description box down below, if I remember. Um, but guys, I really enjoy goats. I love having goats on my property. They do so much to help me maintain my property, keep the weeds down. They trim all the trees up and keep the weeds down. So they're super easy keepers. Now, once you get your fences built, sometimes <sighs> goats are notorious for getting out. Bella, get back from the tripod. Some people say if your fence won't hold water, it won't hold a goat. I haven't had that much problem, but they can be cantankerous. But once you get your fences straightened out, goats are super fun to have on your farm. Get away from the tripod, girl. Uh, Bella, get away from the tripod. Anyways, that's all I've got. I just wanted to get on here and answer a few questions that we've been getting asked over and over and over and over. Oh, and by the way, Bear is an Anatolian Shepherd mix. That is the most asked question on my channel in the last six months. He is half Anatolian Shepherd and half random neighbor dog. That is the most common question. I forgot to answer that earlier. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. I hope that answers a few questions. Goats on my farm, my favorite animal to have around for sure. And they are super tasty and I am super happy that my family decided to go ahead and have a few of them processed this year because we've been eating the hamburger meat and those goat chops and they are delicious. So guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.